The Light Sport and Ultra Light Flyer would like to thank BRS Parachutes for providing air transportation to and from Aero. We would also like to thank ICP North America for supplying our accommodations at the show and Renegade Light Sport aircraft for transportation and meals during the show. We are here at Aero 2013, the grand show for light aircraft in Europe. And today we are going to look at something different than we often look at. This is a diesel engine. I'm speaking with Arnold and Jennifer today. I'm Dan Johnson, and we are doing this thanks to support from the BRS Parachute Company, which is helping us produce videos here at Aero. So, you have something new for us to look at here. We have a diesel engine, but made specifically for light aircraft. Right. Tell us what your thinking was when you had this idea for an engine to replace on light aircraft. The main idea was to reduce the consumption and to increase the reliability and safety of the standard motors. We started this eight years ago. Yeah, this okay. development. And so, up to now, now we came to the point that we can bring it to the uh, publicity and to show it the first time on this aero fair that we have a diesel engine with 7 liters consumption. And 7 liters consumption? 7 liters consumption per hour Okay. at cruising speed. And for, and American, for American consumption, that's less than two gallons per hour. <laughs> so that's a very low number. Yes. We're not all used to liters per hour in the yeah. United States. So yeah, we have you to, have to translate, of course. Um, you've already had some experience between this engine and the Rotax 912, yes. the ULS engine you're yes. comparing it to, not the uh, injected version. Yeah. But you had this on a, uh, an airplane that we know in America, the FK, yes, uh, right. the FK-9 in particular. Yeah. But you have been flying it on the ELA model, which is yes. a little higher weight class uh, than we've seen in the U.S. on the FK-9. Right. But you have one of each. You have one with the Rotax and one with your engine. That's right. And how has been the experience? The uh, difference is rather small. Now, one is a 100 horsepower engine, yeah. I should say. So the gap is Yours rather is small. Yours is 80, so... Rather small. You know... In how it performs, you mean. Yes. Yeah. I okay. mean in, in, uh, regarding to in performance. Flight performance data. So the um, the, uh, <coughs> uh, the cruising speed is 170 to 180 kilometers per hour. Okay. Yeah. With this motor in the elder FK9 Mark IV, okay. and 190 200 uh, kilometers per hour in the, the FK9 E, which is a little cleaner aircraft. Yes. And it's a consumption of 15 liters, up to 16. Uh, in this now, you, you said this engine, which most people think, I did too, that a well, diesel engine, this has to be a greater weight, not less weight. But you right. told me this is actually less weight than less. the Rotax. Yeah. About how much less? Between 4 and 2, 3 kilograms it's lower than Rotax. Okay, so this is uh, several, in, in a, again going to pounds for an American consumption, it's more than 10 pounds lighter, yeah, yeah. and yet it's a okay. So you have now worked with this in an aircraft that we know, in a light aircraft. What other aircraft do you intend this engine to be used for? An ultralight in, the, in, the, in Europe? Yes, any, of course. Of course we are interested in contacts and uh, we definitely will use this aero. Uh, to get this con to get in contact with other clients. Uh, sure, the benefit of being at a show like this, other people will find out that's about it. That's the reason why we that's how we found out about it. So what RPM does this engine operate at then? I'm sorry? The, what RPM the does the engine of the engine? Ah, uh, the, uh, the rest are um, limited to 3,800 by us. Maximum 3,800. By us. Okay. The seat it says 4,2. 4,200. And normal operating speed uh, is uh, in the moment 3,000 up to 3,004. Okay, so that is what we are operating. About in. half. But yet you still use a uh, reduction. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, why why do you use a reduction on it? Of course, why the propeller has an optimal optimal yes. speed of revolution. Yes. Revolution. Yes. So and this is 2,100 about. About. Okay, so you're reducing it less than two to one. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, this engine you mentioned uh, is based on a Mercedes yeah. uh, automobile engine. Yeah. 
in. What kind of car do they use this in, just to give us an idea? The small the car? The smallest one. The okay. The smart. The like the smart car then. Okay. And so this is maybe why you're working with, uh, are you working with Peter Funk on this? Yes, right. Uh, because I know he had some working with the smart engine in an FK9 many years ago. Yeah, right. That's the other model from his father. Ah, yes, Otto, his been. father, right. Otto is his father, and we cooperate very close. Okay. So what is the TBO that expected on the engine now, then? In the moment, we say very conservative, 1,500. Okay. But we expect 2,000 in one, two years, when we start more and more. You'll do some more Rotax. testing with yes. it then. Well, okay, so, so this makes it, again, very comparable to the Rotax engine, which has 2,000 hour now. They also used to be 1,500 and went to 2,000 when they got more experience. So you expect to do the same. But in uh, for American consumption here, a 472 kilo ultralight in Europe, not yes. the same as our ultralight in the U.S. Uh, yes. This is only about 1,000 pounds, so this is a light aircraft that you can use this engine on. And yet you believe that it will produce enough power for a larger aircraft as well, correct? Because you have it on a 600 kilo of course. FK now. Of course, yeah. And so what kind of climb rate do you see? Is a difference in climb rate between So the, the maximum climb rate in this um, FK9 Mark IV is 1,200. Okay. In the moment, but uh, it's not very the, not the end. So we think well, that's we, a very we, strong number, though. Of course, but uh, for minutes, for minutes, it goes up for, with this ratio. And that's maybe because the diesel engines are known to have high torque. High torque. Plus the turbo charge. Ah that yes, okay. Very, very we didn't even mention to achieve so this numbers. So these, this this whole engine here is based on having turbo. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's altitude compensating then as well. Yeah. So you can climb as far as you want. You can. <laughs> you can. As far as the authorities will yeah. allow you. Yeah. Of course. Right. <laughs> Okay, well yeah. to get more information about your project, uh, we'll put it up on the screen, but do you have a website? Right. Tell us course, what the yeah. website is. That's uh, flyeco.net or flyeco.net uh, fly or flyeco.net. Fly okay. yeah. Well, speaking today with Arnim and Jennifer from the uh, very interesting diesel engine based on the Mercedes. I'm Dan Johnson. You can find out more about this, more about the FK projects on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Aero. tranquilamente, lo van a ir a atender. Miren qué bárbaro que estuvo lo del paracaídas balístico. Rápidamente, bomberos, por favor, atentos en caso de que haya algún incendio. Nadie ingresa al predio. Con mucha calma, todo el mundo se queda muy tranquilo en el lugar. Por favor, todo el mundo muy tranquilo en el lugar. Bomberos, ambulancias se van a ir arrimando con mucha calma. No debemos tener ningún otro accidente. No ha pasado absolutamente tranquilo, Cecilia, que es la prima y Luquita que la está asistiendo. Todo el mundo muy tranquilo. Estamos con total seguridad. Dino está fuera de la aeronave. Un poco impotente se debe sentir seguramente.